Hello chemistry geeks and welcome to another chemistry lesson. Today we're going to be tackling some mole conversions. Specifically, these mole conversions involve two steps. We're going to be going from grams to moles and then moles to particles and then we're going to try to flip it. We're going to start with particles. Particles could be atoms or they could be molecules. And then we're going to take that and we're going to convert it to moles and then convert that into grams. So hang in there and I hope you enjoy the two examples that I've got for you today. When we do conversions from grams to particles, this is a two-step calculation. And I want to give you a basic plan that you can always use for these types of calculations. If we start with grams and we want to convert that into moles, Hopefully you've learned by now that the conversion factor for that is molar mass. Once we get to moles, we can do a second conversion over to particles. And again, I'm using the word particles as a generalization. We could be converting to atoms, we could be converting to molecules, we could be converting to formula units, but we always use the conversion factor Avogadro's number, which we've learned is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a really huge number. Sometimes in the problem though, you don't start with grams, you start on the other side. You start with particles. Well, in this case, we can do the same thing, but it's essentially backwards. The first conversion factor that you're going to be using to go to moles is, of course, Avogadro's number. The second conversion that you're going to need is molar mass. So I'm gonna take these two conversions and I'm gonna basically create just one huge plan for you that you can always use. Sometimes in the calculation you start with grams, sometimes you start with particles. I want you to realize then in these types of calculations, you can basically start anywhere in green. And you can go to the right, you can go to the left. As long as you know the correct conversion factor to use, it makes your life a lot easier. For example, if you were starting at moles and you wanted to go to grams, then you simply use molar mass. If you were starting at moles and going to particles, well then you need to use Avogadro's number. Or if you were starting on one side or the other, it would take two steps to get to the other side of the conversion. For example, grams to particles, we do molar mass and then Avogadro's number. And if we go particles to grams, then we do Avogadro's number and then molar mass. In other words, two conversion factors. So let's get going and show you two calculations that involve a two-step calculation. The first problem is this. How many molecules are there in 15 grams of water? I've written down the plan, and of course we are starting with grams on this one, and we're gonna be going all the way over to molecules. And again, molecules is just one example of a type of particle that we could have. In a problem like this, I always tell my students, let's start with the given. Search the prompt. Can you find the number? The number in the question is 15.0 grams of water. If we're starting with grams and converting to moles, then you're going to need the molar mass. So down below, what I've done is I've provided the molar mass for you. In a water molecule, we have two hydrogen atoms, and you can see me taking the molar mass of a hydrogen atom, 1.01, and multiplying that by two. In that molecule, we've got one atom of oxygen. We take the molar mass of oxygen, 16.00, multiply that by one. We add everything together, and we get 18.02 grams. So in our first conversion factor, what we're going to need to use is one mole of water has a molar mass of 18.02 grams. I want you to remember that conversion factors like this can be flipped upside down. We sometimes write the molar mass with the 18.02 grams on the top and the one mole on the bottom. But the reason why I put the 18.02 grams on the bottom is because in factor label, also called dimensional analysis, 
The grams that we started with in the given had to cancel out with the units in the next conversion factor. In other words, the grams on top cancel with the grams on the bottom, and those units are effectively now gone. Our new unit is moles, which we can see in that first conversion factor. Well, now let's go from moles and let's convert over to molecules. To do that, we need Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things are in one mole of anything. And again, this is a conversion factor. Sometimes Avogadro's number goes up top and sometimes that large number goes down on the bottom. Why did I put it up on the top? Because I knew in that last conversion factor, we still had the unit of mole and we needed to get rid of that. And so the moles on the top and the moles on the bottom cancel. And again, this is another one of the rules that I really like to tell my students. Cancel the units as you go. That's a really effective way to find the right answer. And the very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our calculator. I don't like you to grab your calculator until the very end. You shouldn't be using your calculator more than one time on any particular calculation we're going to start inputting the numbers and in the little box down below you can see what i'm putting in my calculator i do ignore the one because the ones they don't change anything so i don't even bother to put it in my calculator i'm going to take the number 15.0 i'm going to multiply by avogadro's number remember when you put avogadro's number in your calculator it's important that you're putting 6.02 Usually we use the second function, E button, 23, for us to write times 10 to the 23rd power. We then are dividing by what we've got in the denominator, which is 18.02. When you do that, you should get your final answer, which is 5.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. In the next example, we're going to flip it. Remember, in the last one, we started with grams and went to particles. Well, this time we're starting with particles and we're going to go to grams. We're using the same plan, which you see shown below, but realize in this case we're starting off with particles, using Avogadro's number to convert to moles, and then using the molar mass of methane to convert to grams. I always have three simple rules when I do factor label. Number one is start with your given. Number two, cancel units as you go. And number three, don't do any math until the very end. So let's do this. The given in this problem is the numerical value 4.68 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of methane. If we are trying to go from molecules to moles, we will use the conversion factor, Avogadro's number. Think about how you're going to arrange this conversion factor. If you start with molecules on the top, we're going to want molecules on the bottom so we can cancel out those units. That leaves us with mole as our remaining unit up in the numerator. This time we need to go from moles over to grams. The conversion factor is molar mass. Let's stop for a moment and calculate the molar mass of CH4. In the box shown below, you can see that I am adding together the molar mass of one carbon atom, which is 12.01, and four hydrogen atoms, which is 4.04. .04. And when I add all of that together, we find that one mole of CH4 has a molar mass of 16.05 grams. If we are canceling units as we go, in this next conversion factor, we will want the 16.05 grams on the top and the one mole on the bottom, which allows us to cancel those units. Using our calculator, be really careful with these exponents. In my calculator, I would type in 4.68, use that second function button, uh, which would give us e to the 22nd, so we are to the 22nd power. 
Let's multiply by whatever else we see in the numerator, which is 16.05, and then divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, being careful to put that in our calculator in the correct way. When we select enter, you should get an answer of 1.25 grams as your answer. Thank you for joining me for these mole calculations. You should now be able to do two-step conversions, both converting from grams to particles and converting from particles to grams. I hope these examples were helpful. You can find more of my chemistry tutorials on YouTube.